Hello and welcome to this special episode of the AutoCAR Professional interview. Our guest today is a first generation entrepreneur who hails from Haveri in Karnataka and now uh, heads a venture, his own venture in Detroit and Dallas. And I'm talking to Mr. Prabhu Patil, President and CEO of Prolim International, our guest today. Thank you very much, Prabhu, for sparing your time. Thank you. And uh, tell us, uh, how's your journey? I mean, you, you didn't uh, start off as an entrepreneur, right? You were working with an MNC. Correct. Right? And then you got posted in, uh, in US. Right. So I went to US uh, working for uh, IBM. And uh, as I went through uh, my technical career, I got more fascinated with uh, the technology and of course completed in my growth in this area. Then I uh, found that I had to improve my sales, marketing, and other areas where I didn't get an opportunity to work on. So I thought I should go to a business school. And uh, part of that, uh, I applied for that business school. And there was an essay uh, which asked about what do you do 10 years after completing MBA. So I wrote an essay about uh, that I will start my own business. And uh, that's how I wrote. And, took three months and... Uh, did you write that essay thinking of, on that topic, thinking it to be an interesting topic or did you actually have that plan in mind while writing the essay? Yeah, initially I was, I was just trying to answer the question. <laughs> then as I found that it's very, very competitive in this, uh, in, the, in the business school, University of Michigan, Ross Business School. So I had to really uh, put my whole heart in writing it. What's real? It's my story, my essay kind of a thing. It took me about three months to write that essay, and uh, that's where I wrote, I will start my own business. So then I went to school, um, did my MBA, and after that I started working into different companies like uh, UGS and Siemens PLM. Then after that I decided, okay, this is the time now to uh, start my own company, and that's how it started. Uh, what's the scope you see for, uh, uh, for your business uh, in India? So India is a very fascinating market. Uh, we have been in India since uh, the last uh, more than 10 years, but it was more of a offshore delivery center supporting to our uh, US uh, European markets. But as we see that India is the fastest growing economy in the world, and uh, every sector, automotive, aerospace, machinery, every, every industry that we work on are growing at leaps and bounds. And the same technology and same process that we are uh, using and uh, helping our customers in the U.S. that can be applied here as well. Right. And uh, since you uh, work with clients in U.S. and are working now with clients in India, uh, what is the kind of difference you observe in terms of approach in the area of engineering between, say, someone in Detroit as against someone in, say, Delhi NCR? So um, there is a significant uh, difference. Um, in, in the United States or Detroit where it's a mature market, uh, where the, the, the customers are demanding more functionality, more capability, the government has put in more regulations and uh, customers want more for less. Uh, all these uh, technologies like AI, the machine learning, every technology uh, has been put into the uh, automotive industrial cars, for example. So the approach is more of a system engineering, requirements driven product development and manufacturing, it's called system engineering. Um, the same thing is coming up in India as well. Could you throw some light on what kind of uh, uh, in technologies they would be, they could be working for, for current and maybe future applications? So uh, we have three centers in India, Bangalore where we are sitting here today and Hubli and uh, recently we started in Gurgaon, Delhi. So the most of the high-end um, technology uh, space, uh, we are heavily into uh, development all in, uh, in uh, Bangalore, and uh, Hubli is more of a, more of back offices or mundane operations, etc. Because getting the talent in uh, different locations is uh, different. So now uh, we open in uh, Gurgaon. Gurgaon is again a mature market with a lot of talented resources available. Then we are ramping up to support. Uh, uh, automotive industry and aerospace in, in that region. As a PLM solutions provider, uh, what kind of uh, role do you think you'll have to really play to kind of tap the opportunities? 
So um, we born in Detroit, which is the automotive uh, mecca of, uh, of the world. Um, every, pretty much every company is in, uh, in Detroit. Everybody speaks the auto language there. Uh, so it's always a forefront of uh, technology innovation. Um, in, in terms of uh, the automotive new trends, so the key trends are artificial intelligence, and machine learning, mobility, and uh, Internet of Things or the Industry 4.0. So the key is that what is going on is that just in, in underlying all this is a digital transformation. So if you look at what we call in PLM world digital twin, whatever you see in the physical world, a car or in a two wheeler, the same thing you have to see it in digitally, complete digitally in the in, in the in the computer system. And also another factor as the industry progresses, there is a reduction or or say fast forwarding of the or shrinking of the product life cycles. Yes. And in such a scenario, uh, one would assume that the pr profitability comes under, it's challenged. You know, it, there's a pressure on sustaining profitability. Profitability of the auto industry? Of the, the, OEMs. Of, of the yeah. OEMs. And uh, thereby, you know, some effect on the uh, service providers as well. Uh, so how do you face, how do you address that challenge? So, uh, if you look at when we were um, uh, was working with uh, Toyota many years ago, uh, it used to take around 34 months to introduce a new vehicle the, the part of their R&D process. So the goal is to bring it down to 24 months. So in order to sustain and survive in the marketplace, in the competitive world, where the new companies are coming from Korea, a worldwide competition now, so this innovation is very critical, and hence your product life cycles have to be shorter. If you look at uh, 10 years ago in the any vehicle, automotive car or even your two wheelers, there's heavy mechanical components, then a little bit of electronics. Now if you look at that, there's a huge company, in particular new cars, the, uh, the new, lots of software going into that, every components, every subsystems. So if you don't innovate that, you will not survive in this marketplace. Any new areas of application, especially in this area of disruptions? So the, the major disruption is the Industry 4.0. So if you look at uh, Industry 1.0, it's all about uh, steam engines. Industry 2.0 is all about automation. 3.0 is all internet and uh, um, all revolution. 4.0 is all about connectivity and in internet of things. So if you look at uh, the new trend, it's not a trend anymore, it's a necessity right now, uh, where the vehicles are coming out of uh, assembly line, you are, you are going through this whole series of manufacturing and automation, and you're collecting that data and, and um, making the decisions. Or your vehicles, or your equipment, the heavy machinery equipment, for example, who are in the field, you want to see the performance. In getting that informed data continuously and looking at its performance uh, improvement or predictability or even also look at uh, vehicle where there are a lot of features vehicle or any product even iPhone for example a lot of features many people all the most of the consumers use very few functions now you can get that feedback what features they are using and which, which one don't then you can obsolete some of those and improve on add on things so this Internet of Things, which is a revolutionary not only automotive industry, it's pretty much every industry. And in India now, we are as we are moving towards uh, the next emission norm, which is Bharat Stage 6. Uh, there also, there are a lot of technological advancements happening. Yes. And from PLM perspective also, uh, has your role becoming more engaging in, in projects related to BS6 here? Could, could you throw some light on, I mean, in what area uh, no, do you do say, you know, uh, uh, solution providers like you, you know, come and play. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Such new so if, if I compare uh, US and uh, India, the, the, the same same scenario many years ago with the California and Los Angeles, a lot of pollution. That's why US came with uh, EPA regulations. And uh, India now is uh, New Delhi, a lot of pollution. That's why this uh, uh, bar stage six is coming up, which is based on uh, Euro four. Euro four now is beyond that. Um, the, it's good for the environment, good for all of us who are living here. So, because it's improved the quality of life. 
So in order to do that, um, I mean, all these manufacturing OEMs and all, obviously there's a pain, a little bit pain in more here. It's estimated around 70 to 90,000 crores of additional investment needs to happen. But um, if you change that thing, um, adopt this technology or adopt this regulations, it will improve the bottom line. The PLM as a solution providers, we work with some of the US automotive companies to improve the design of uh, engines. For example, if you're a nice engine, design of the engines to an entire exhaust system to applying this uh, CAD, CAM, PLM, CAE simulation to simulate the entire thing. And as they testing it out, collecting the data and analyzing and fine tuning the, the design. So that's the how that emissions you can control and, and meet those regulations. So similarly in India now with the um, um, bar stage six, so in order to bring that, you have to invest in technology. How can you build those products, whether it's an IC engine or electric vehicle in this case, that can be build those products with applying this technology to make it lighter, make it simpler, make it faster, and less um, fuel consumption. Because it's safer. Safer. So applying all these things. Right. So one of the things is, um, uh, I, I read a long time back, I think, uh, Marshall, I believe it's a, what got you here will not take you there. We all think we as a technical people, hey, I got on technology, I'm smart and all now, I'm ready I'm engineer, to, I'm an engineer, I can do the business. It's totally different. So it, it will brought you here as a technology person or a business person at a level. You learn what to do. Now I want to get there, be an entrepreneur. You need to unlearn certain things. There is nothing, there's no, that nobody behind you. You're alone, you're walking this. There is nothing book you can read and follow through. Uh, so you will have to learn along the way. It's it's a uh, it's a uh, bumps comes along the way, and you have a strong stomach and uh, keep that. So what I used to tell myself that uh, where I came from, corporate world, we had everybody else. You got an IT person helping you, you got an admin person helping you. Now when you become an entrepreneur, you are on your own. You had there's nobody behind you. If you look around. So we had to keep saying, hey, your, dog, your salary is one dollar. Your salary is one dollar. I had to say a lot louder. And then you had to keep going. Don't worry about it. So if you keep telling and unlearn that what you are used to and transform yourself and then focusing, okay, this is what I know. I'm going to focus on it. I see there is a market. So I see if there is a business. But it takes time. I'm ready, slow, and steady till win the race. If you have that attitude, mentality, and patience, and willingness to learn as it's a journey, not an event, and it will be successful. I think uh, that explains how uh, your venture got rated as one of the fastest growing in the, in the US, right? Yes, yeah. yes. On that note, Prabhu, thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. And wishing you and your team at Prolim all the very best. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for watching this special episode of the Autocar Professional interview. We were chatting with Mr. Prabhu Patil, President and CEO of Prolim International, a first generation entrepreneur. He shared his stories. And uh, thank you for watching this episode. And we will see you again. Goodbye.